Hi, and welcome to this lecture on dynamic typing versus static typing. Now, in order to understand this, I'm going to start by looking at what static typing is. So many languages are statically typed. Languages like Java, C++, C Sharp, Swift, and many others are statically typed. So let's look at Java as an example. In this piece of code there, we have string my var equals hello. Now there's a few things happening here. One is that we have a variable name, just like we have in Python. That's no different. What is different, though, is that we have a data type that we're associating with the variable name. This data type is a string. And then lastly, we have a value, a string literal, hello, that we're assigning to my var. So now what's happening is very similar to what happens with Python. That string literal hello gets created in memory as an object at some memory address. It has a data type of string, it has a value hello, and the memory address. What's a little bit different is that my var is a variable, but it is a variable of type string. We have associated the data type with the variable. And then that variable becomes a reference to that memory address, just like we have in Python. So that's really the crux of the difference between Python and a statically typed language like Java. The data type is associated with the variable name. So if we write some code later on, like my var equals 10, well, this isn't going to work. It's not going to work because my var was declared as a string. And 10 is an integer. It's not a type that is compatible with string. So that won't work. We can, however, say later on in our code, my var equals ABC, right? The string literal ABC, that's perfectly fine because, well, ABC is a string. So that's okay, right? So that's really the main difference. Now, Python is dynamically typed. So the main difference, if we look at this piece of Python code here, is that we're not specifying that my var is of type string. My var is just a reference, nothing more to an object. That object currently happens to be a string object with a value of hello. But the type is not attached to my var. So just like we've seen before, my var is a reference to the string object in memory. Later on, if we say my var equals 10, that's perfectly legal. All we're doing is that we are creating an object in memory an integer object with value 10, and we are changing the reference of my var to point to that integer. So, in effect, we kind of think that the type of my var has changed. Well, my var never had a type to start off with. My var was just a reference. What has changed is the type of the object that my var was pointing to. Right? So we can use the built-in type function to determine the type of the object currently referenced by a variable, but that can change over time. Remember, Python types, the variables, do not have an inherent static type. So when we call type of my var, Python will look up the object that my var is referencing currently, right, that it's pointing to, and it will return the type of that object. So let's take a look at some code and see how that works. All right, so let's take a look at this very quickly. Let's start with a variable a and let's make it equal to a string. So remember, a now is a reference to a string object in memory, it has a memory address and so on. Now we can look at the type of a and we get that it's a string. Now, it's not really the type of a. Keep that in mind. What it really is, it's the type of the object that A is referencing. So if later we change A's reference to something else, maybe we change it to an integer. Now we can look at the type of A and we see that the type is now an integer. Maybe we change it to something else. Maybe, and this is something we'll cover later, we'll change it to, let's say, a lambda expression, right? So basically it's a function. A is a function, right? We can call A with a value of 2, it's going to return 2 squared because x is the parameter. It has a value of 2, so we get 4. And we can look at the type of a, and a is a function. 
right? If A is equal to 3 plus 4J, which is now a complex number, we can look at the type of A and it tells us that it's a complex number and so on. Every time we've simply changed the reference of A to a different object and what type will return the type of that object in memory. So quite straightforward and that's what a dynamically typed language is. All right, I'll see you in the next video.